Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and this video we're breaking down Deadpool and Wolverine. With the new trailer dropping yesterday, I thought we'd take a second look and go over some theories that we have about the movie. There's tons of little clues and teasers for things in the future, and in this video I want to break it all down. We're not going to do a big intro, I just want to jump straight into it and talk about why I think we're going to see Daphne Keen. Trust me kid, I'm no hero. Now that line stands out to me a bunch because of the use of the word kid and the fact that Wolverine's saying he's not a hero. Because we're dealing with alternate versions of the character, I think we're going to go into the Logan universe. This was teased at during that very first trailer when we could catch Deadpool fighting in the woods. This looked like the same tree stum that Logan died on and Deadpool also threw three blades. Many people have thought this might actually be the claws from his corpse with Deadpool grabbing these and using them as a weapon. I think in this world that we might also encounter X-23 who thinks that her hero has returned. Logan of course died saving her and her friends so she'd be over the moon to see him coming back. I doubt Wolverine would be saying trust me kid I'm not a hero to Deadpool cause I can't see Deadpool getting called kid. Also doubt that he'd think he was a hero cause Paradox has already explained what happened to his universe. Is that what you said when your world went to shit? Come again. This Wolverine let down his entire world. Now what that is, is something we get teasers to throughout, with the X-Men all clearly being dead. We pass what I believe are their gravestones, with these all being similar in design to the one for Professor X. Ryan Airy, bloody Ryan Airy, also pointed out they're similar to the graves of Days of Future Past, with this being another time when the mutants were wiped out. Shut the f*** up Ryan Airy! It was on Colton's video though, so I won't slag him off, and he's a nice guy. Now the X-Men, they're not having a good time at the moment mate, with X-Men 97 also dealing with their deaths too. Definitely make sure you subscribe for our breakdowns on that show every week and perhaps mutants dying is considered a canon event. In Logan they'd been all but wiped out because Essex Corp had been lacing food and drink with chemicals. Professor X had killed some of the X-Men and a not a good time to be him. There's of course the days of future past stuff and also things like House of M where most of the mutants get wiped down to the bare numbers. Wolverines kill the X-Men in the comics before as well with this being a big thing in Old Man Logan in that he was hypnotised by Mysterio and then sent into an illusion where he was tricked into killing them. Shoutouts to Ed and Amat for pointing out that this could also be a branch from X-Men The Last Stand. Say there's a reality where Wolverine didn't kill Jean, it could eventually lead to all the X-Men's deaths. He could have been a coward that didn't make the hard choice and this might explain why it's him who was left alive. Jean always had a thing for him, even if her man only had eye for her. A eh? had eye for her. Now still though, Wolverine's been left alive for a reason, which seems strange when the rest were all killed. Now it's possible Cassandra Nova could have been behind it too, as she makes a big entrance in the trailer. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Coming out of the skull of a giant man, this is also a nod to old man Logan in that Wolverine travels through the wasteland of America alongside his old buddy Hawkeye. They came across the corpse of him on the road, which Nova's now using as a sort of Cerebro, I think. A guy MT pointed out that Cerebro's built like a brain and that Nova's using where a literal one would be. Cerebro is a play off the word Cerebrum and Nova at this point is literally coming out of one. She's also clearly collecting discarded mutants and we can see them lining the front of the head. I wonder if she's the one who got Logan to kill the X-Men and this would just tie things together nicer. Sure we could have some backstory that ties in other things but it just sets her up as a bigger threat if she's the one who did it. In the teaser we see her puppeting Logan and she may have used him as the one to carry it out. This is akin to Magneto on the train and it leaves Logan completely at her mercy. I'd love to see a scene where she just moves around the X-Mansion throwing him about and he has to watch as he cuts up his friends. Leaving him alive would be so messed up and an incredible way to flesh out the villain. She's wanted to kill them several times in the comics too with that wild sentinel in X-Men 97 being a direct reference to her. Probably isn't going to be her in the show but it shows how powerful she is and yeah the kind of thing that she could be bringing to this movie. Now there's actually a little clue that she had some involvement which you can see if you zoom in when she's walking out the head. Just below her you can catch what appears to be a wheelchair with her likely taking this from Charles as a trophy. She may be riding round in it, showboating and then get up to walk down the ramp to kind of show how much of a G she is. 
She clearly doesn't need it though, and to just have it as a throne would be something that's pretty messed up. Now I wonder if the X-Men being killed is pretty much a canon event with most realities having it happen. Humans of course hate the mutants and they have lots of enemies that are trying to make them extinct. Now breakdown yesterday, we also went over some of the rumours about the film and how the multiverse is apparently going to work. Daniel RPK said that every Earth has a hero in it who acts as an anchor and that's what keeps that universe safe. If they're removed as something goes wrong, that Earth then starts to decay. This eventually leads to the end of it and this is why I think Logan could be to his. Perhaps his world's dying along with Deadpool's which is why he's desperate for him to help save things. I do wonder if this is why Deadpool's going to turn against the TVA as they're also the ones who can help control reality. We did have a theory that Paradox is the bad guy and there's a reason why he's recruiting the heroes. This could be for his own secret war in which he's attempting to seize power and rule the multiverse. Deadpool can break the fourth wall and this could be the reason why he ended up grabbing him. Talked about that more in the video yesterday so I don't just want to repeat it but yeah head over there if you want to check it out. Now Logan probably doesn't like him as I think he's also the one who smashed him in the face like the like button. I also wonder if this bar shot's the same as the bar from the first film and this is why the characters returned here. Potentially he could have gone back to life on the road and could be hitting up his old hotspots. Castle Lad Paz is 76, they pointed out on our old breakdown that that might be why he's not welcome there. I did go back and look and the ball looks a little different but they're both in Canada so it might be the same. Been 24 years mate, 24 years since our first film so they might have had a little renovation. Now he does say, Just give me one more drink and then I'll leave. With that give me one more, maybe just being a meta joke about how Hugh Jackman just wants one more time in the role. I do think he's also going to come back for Secret Wars 2 with this movie setting him up as one of the main characters. Anyway, Nova's clearly collecting lots of cast offs which we can see from the front of her base. We know that Sabretooth's going to be there due to behind the scenes shots with Logan and him going head to head. In the last breakdown we also spotted Lady Deathstrike, Azazel, Pyro and Toad but there was one character I couldn't quite make out. I actually think though that this might be the Russian which is due to the stripes we see on his top. He showed up during Punisher and Punisher got dunked on more time than the paper basket at the office. The Russian isn't a mutant though so it might not be true but he has had parts of his body replaced with highly durable plastic to help increase his strength. Whether it's him or not though I'm not fully sure but I do think that that vest stands out of it. Also he might be a mutant, I'm not fully up on the character. Now what he needs is a really bloody good t-shirt so the guy should head over directly to our merch store. Right below the video is where you'll find it my friends and it's got lots of different stuff on there for you to go peruse. We've got it's all connected shirts, X-Men 97 inspired ones, House of the Dragon, Theory Time and more. All goes towards helping videos like this get made and huge thank you if you've picked one up. Now another question people have is who's behind the portal we see appearing at the end. This is clearly summoned by someone because neither Logan or Wade have the power to do it. So we must be getting a wizard in the movie and there's a number of people that I think that this could be. Doctor Strange is the most obvious candidate with Wong also potentially being there as well. However this is Deadpool so I think it's more likely to be a joke one and I actually think that it might just be Ned. He was busting out the moves in No Way Home and I think it would be hilarious if he was just in his room practicing some tricks. Guy is 2 for 2 pulling sick characters through from other franchises and I think this would be a great ongoing joke. Anyway that's the video and thanks for checking it out and I also want to thank you guys for all your support on yesterday's breakdown. We're bloody number 5 on trending, number 5 rubbing shoulders with Mr Beast Shabow. I can't wait to play ukulele for Colleen Ballinger and also show up on the Joe Rogan podcast. Probably going to see my DMs leak next week where I call all my viewers idiots that didn't hit the thumbs up. Cancellation tours, the lot, I played this stinking city like a harp from hell. And yeah, obviously I'm not talking about you because you remembered to hit it. Also, you might hear my voice is completely destroyed. It's 5am, got up early to do it. Uh, so yeah, the thumbs up's so much appreciated. And if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. For just 99 cents a month you'll get early access to breakdowns every week and it goes a massive way to helping videos like this get made. If you want something else to watch then check out our main breakdown and huge thank you again to everyone who's watched it. Without the way, I've been your host Paul, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.